for watching my video channel. I uh, got a you know, just kind of pondering over the past few days, had some really cool experiences. Um, went to see my friend Maria Lupita Martinez last night, the one I met a couple weeks ago and I talked about on an earlier blog, and talked about her book that uh, she gave me as a gift. Um, today I want to talk about a subject that's based on a meme I saw in, on Facebook, but I think it's actually a really uh, a cool subject to talk about because it's something that we're all dealing with at some point in our life. And so some of us have experienced depression in our life and we, uh, we experience low self-esteem at certain periods of our lives. It can be based on circumstances. It can be because you lost your job or your marriage didn't work out or you had a really bad childhood. Or very, There's a lot of reasons why we go into a depression or we have a low self-esteem. Um, and so it's interesting because we'll go through these periods and then we'll try to self-diagnose ourselves and say, well, I have low self-esteem or I'm... Uh, um, you know, um, I have depression and stuff like that, but we haven't officially been diagnosed. And then even when we're officially diagnosed, um, it can be still those circumstances are still around us. So it's interesting because this meme says, uh, before you diagnose yourself with depression or low self-esteem, make sure you are simply not in fact simply surrounded by assholes. And I, I don't know why I just broke up and started laughing about this because I made me realize that, you know, I've kind of come to a place in my life where I'm just myself and I'm just going to be myself. And it doesn't mean that I don't take a, a feedback from people or listen to what people have to say. And if it resonates with me, I'll definitely, uh, you know, look at potentially changing that part of myself. Um, however, what it means is that what happens is that when people's fears and their ang anxieties and their angers and stuff, they try to use that to try to control us and manipulate us. And it's very subtle sometimes because um, they will literally try to uh, do it in a way sometimes where it seems like they actually care about you or that uh, it'll make you be better and that kind of stuff. Oh, you know, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that because, you know, this will make you be better at what you're wanting to do for your life. Don't you want to be better? And, and then when you say no, they'll say things like, oh, I'm just trying to help you. I don't know why you can't see that. And so it's it's very subtle how they do it. I mean, it's with a codependent uh, passive-aggressive tactic. And when they're doing passive-aggressive tactics, you already know that they're uh, not in alignment and they're operating from fear or anger, anxiety, that kind of stuff, because they're trying to keep their small little box put together. They're trying to say, hmm, I want it to be still in this little container. And because they want it in this little container and they don't want to venture out, um, they want to. They, they feel safe here, and your whatever it is you're doing is shaking up that safety for them. And so, they that what people do is uh, anytime you've shooken up their world, they will um, they'll do they'll do these uh, tactics. Maybe it's aggressive tactics. Maybe they're uh, trying to be angry with you. Maybe they they say a lot of nasty words to you. Maybe they call you names, um, or they'll do the passive one. Uh, where, you know, they're, they're poor, poor me, look what you've done to me, and all that other kind of stuff. And the first rule to understand when you're talking about this kind of stuff is that you cannot do anything to another person, at least on an emotional level, uh, that they do not allow. So in other words, when you say something, uh, they have to respond or react in whatever way they want to. They have that choice to respond with a positive or a negative. So they can choose, and, and it's their right to be able to choose. They can they can respond with a negative, and then you have the right to respond the way you want to. So when you're talking about communication, there is a giver and a receiver. And so in each, in each instance, the receiver has the right to receive information and respond to that information however way they choose to. And you have the same, and it's, it becomes this flow of energy and this space that happens in between uh, both of you. So... And then what happens is that we don't like how they respond, uh, and then sometimes we'll have a reactive uh, um, response, and then we become argumentative. Now, how to stop that is uh, to um, agree with where they're at. You know, and there, there's a, what's what is called a negative assertion, and I learned this from a book um, called Crucial Conversations. And so, when you uh, stop just for a second and you think about it, because your initial reaction might be, "I want to tear this person up and tell them off," or Whatnot. They deserve it. How dare they accuse me of whatever it is that they're accusing me of? And you know, I mean, I've been called everything from arrogant to a jerk to an asshole and everything else. Um, and yeah, I've been guilty of being an asshole before, uh, based on this uh, meme that I'm talking about. 
Uh, however, there's times when I'm, I'm looking at them like, no, that wasn't what my intention was at all. And you're just upset about how you received it. And because of how you received it, you're going to villainize me because that's the story that you're playing in your head. Um, and so that how the story is playing in their head is making them respond the way they're responding. So, but they have a choice. They are, they can be proactive or reactive. So they can make that choice. There's a space in between. It may be very subtle and very quick, but they have that choice. So, anyways, the point is is that negative assertion. Negative assertion is you agree with any facts, uh, you agree to any perceived facts, uh, and you agree to any potential facts. So, in other words, if somebody looks at you and say you're an asshole, you're a jerk, you can say, you know, I I'm so sorry that you feel that way, or I totally understand. Uh, you know, at times I can be a real jerk and an asshole. And, and so what you're doing is you're agreeing, you're not maybe agreeing with that necessary, that circumstances, but you're agreeing and you're agreeing with that potential. Um, you know, because it's, it's at times you can be a jerk. Every one of us can have that, that part of ourselves where we, that shadow or that wetiko or that darkness or that whatever part of yourself that wants to jump out, that little beast in you that wants to jump out and argue with people. And so um, there's nothing wrong with saying, you're right, at times I can be an asshole. Uh, and thank you for uh, um, um, making that, um, you know, bringing that to light. I'll, I'll really ponder and think about that. Now, in the end, when you ponder and think about it, it's your choice on how you're going to take that information. You can say, you can agree with them, and start to make what subtle changes, or you can not agree with them, and you can uh, uh, move on, and you can say, hey, you, you can even go back to them and say, hey, I, thank you for that feedback. Um, I don't necessarily agree with it, and this is the reasons why. This is what my intention was, and that kind of stuff. Now, as far as social media goes, uh, because a lot of this stuff happens on social media, and because I do a video blog and a blog, and I've done radio shows and that kind of stuff, um, you know, I've had all kinds of times where people have stated their opinions and that kind of stuff, and um, it really comes down to the fact that um, I realize sometimes I'm saying something that they just don't want to hear. So that inner darkness or that inner fear or that inner potential and the part of themselves that they don't want to look at is lashing out. And it comes back to that old part that I've said before on shows. Um, once you got one finger pointing out in judgment, you got three pointing back at you. And it's interesting because we can all be in judgment. So a lot of times the judger will judge the judged. Are the are the judge the people that are judging? So um, I've been just as guilty of this. I've judged people that were judging other people. So and they shouldn't do that. They're supposed to be spiritual and they're, they're in judgment. Hey, as long as you're in this flesh, you you have the potential of being in judgment. As a matter of fact, you're doing it all the time because you're making assessments of people without having complete facts. Um, interesting. I had a situation come up recently where somebody had told. Uh, another person that they had ascended in this lifetime. And I'm sorry, my personal belief is you don't ascend. If you were sitting here in this flesh, um, unless you're manifesting yourself into the flesh uh, with a conscious thought, you know, from spirit or soul, then to me, you are not ascended. Um, but this person is displaying um, a lot of um, things in life that it's, it's gotten, gotten to their head, so to speak. And yeah, maybe they have a lot of, they, they were very spiritual and they're a very great light and a very big light. And hey, great people go into their ego and they go into limitations. So um, it's not, when, and including myself at times. And so, um, and that is a part of the path, that is a part of the walk. Um, because when you go into the ego, edging God out, uh, or however you want to refer to it as, then you um, learning a lot of great lessons about humility and being humble and empowerment, by the way. Because then you learn what true empowerment is. Because when you were cut off and you're in the ego, you're not seeing. You've been veiled. You start to see things. Oh, I'm this and I'm that and all that kind of stuff. And um, the truth is, is that uh, the only thing that most of us know, if we really want to look at this, is Socrates. We can say, so look at it this way. The only thing I know is that I know nothing. And yeah, I'm connected to this great consciousness and this powerful thing. And I am this great divine being. But this flesh is veiled. And so because it's failed, well, we don't see things clearly at times. And so because we don't see things clearly at times, sometimes we respond in the less than uh, ideal way of uh, responding. So, But the, the choice here is to, when you have that immediate reaction inside of yourself, to stop and think about it. 
and and respond with a way of compassion and even looking for what you can agree uh, in somebody's statement. You can say, hey, I totally see your point there and, uh, and thanks for bringing that up to me and thanks for the comment, especially with social media. Even the interaction, you can say, thanks for bringing that to my attention. I really do appreciate it. And, uh, you know, you don't have to uh, jump into how dare you and all that kind of stuff because when you do that, you, your body already starts to close off. It, it goes into fear, it goes into reaction, and it goes into pain. And so you can really start to uh, uh, think about what uh, it is that you're uh, responding to and start practicing that muscle before it becomes, uh, before it starts ruling you, so to speak. So uh, there's a lot to think about, but I'll read this phrase one more time. Before you diagnose yourself with depression, or low self-esteem, make sure you are in, are not, in fact, simply surrounded by assholes. And what this also means is that I want you to think about that. So, you know, maybe you are surrounded by people, your friends group, your family, your your relationship, so to speak. Maybe that's not empowering. Maybe it is causing you depression. And um, maybe it's continued, continued, been going on for years. And so um, the truth is, is you want to really look at that because if, if your spouse or family members or whatever are causing that kind of emotion in you, so you either got to do one or two things. You either got to work through it and be okay with who they are, um, or you've got to let go of that person. And there's only really two choices that I've come up with. Maybe you guys have other ones that can make suggestions, but I've looked at it this way. I either have to change how I see myself in the situation and change how I see them in the situation, so that I can become at peace with it, or I have to leave the situation. I have to let them go completely, or I have to let go of their triggers. So you know, I have to look at whatever it is that triggers me that makes them that makes me depressed or have a low self-esteem. I have to let go of all their opinions. I can't let their opinions overrule me, so to speak, because um, the, any, anything that stamps out my inner voice uh, that says I need to do this or that, and they're coming along and saying I don't know why you do that or they have some kind of opinion that downs it, um, I'm the one that has to make the choice to respond to that, as I was stating uh, before earlier. And one of that is, is my response to how my self-esteem is going to be. So uh, I want to keep myself empowered. I want to make that choice to be empowered, to continue to follow my inner voice and follow that soulful path in order to find you know, that uh, congruent and alignment way of thinking with the body, mind, and soul so that I'm in a synergy as opposed to being not congruent with uh, how my uh, body, mind, and soul is working. So what happens is uh, they call them chicken or uh, hen parties, and they're like, nee, 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 always talking. And because they're always talking, um, and then they talk to you, it, it, that, that, type, that, that type of banter can lower your self-esteem. Uh, however, you are making the choice to allow it because you can always walk away. And you can always say, no, that's not, I'm not accepting your opinion of me, and you can move on. So please make that choice. Make yourself empowered. You don't have to um, use other people's opinions to lower yourself. Now, if an opinion that they give resonates with you, look at it, ponder it, and, uh, and uh, use it, because that could be wisdom that could really help you in life. Um, however, if it's, if it's lowering your self-esteem and making you feel bad about yourself, you still want to look at it because it may be the way you're looking at it or perceiving it. So you want to really pay attention uh, to both sides. And uh, hey, um, post some comments. Maybe we can help each other uh, you know, work through this. Maybe it can really help us out uh, and other people. Maybe your comments, because people read the YouTube comments, maybe those will really help people out and uh, um, they could reach out to you or they can see that and they say, well, I never really thought about it that way. And, and uh, we can be a community of people helping each other. So. Uh, there's a lot of things that I just want everybody to just follow their soul. And and when they can follow their souls, then they can really find uh, happiness in their life. So anyways, peace and uh, namaste. Love you all. And uh, you have an amazing, amazing uh, rest of August and the rest of 2016. And I'm sure I'll be posting a video soon. All right. Bye-bye.